My name is Yi Hanzhou. I am a user data analyst researcher of NetEase company. The paper I will introduce today is titled Analyzing User Behavior Pattern in Casual Game Using Time Series Clustering. Here is the basic introduction of NetEase company. It is a leading internet technology company based in China, which develops and operates some of China's most popular mobile and PC games. Here we can see some game products of NetEase. Some of them are quite famous and popular in China. Some of them, such as Uno, is even popular over the world. Here is my basic information. As the user data analyzer researcher, in my work, I focus on game data analysis, especially on user behavior analysis, as well as recommendation algorithm and their practical applications on game products. And this presentation will be organized as four parts, which are the backgrounds of this work, the solution we proposed, and the third part of data sets is about how we select the data from the real-world game products, and the final part shows the results. Here is the background of this work. Why we care about user behavior classification? For the online games, not like the traditional games people play offline, the users continue to play. Of course, it not means they never stop playing. It means that the game was designed to let people log in and play at least several times a day or several times a week, and continue doing this for a very long time, such as a year or more. So which makes the game company need to operate the game for a long time and make sure there are always new content to update it. So the user pattern analysis is very important to, get, to guide the game design and operation. Here in this work, we use the user data time series clustering to analyze the user behavior pattern. The advantages of time series clustering compared with using the summed data of a pyramid of time is that it can better reflect the player's behavior over time. But it also brings some difficulties, such as the higher data dimensions. And there are several kinds of the time series distance definitions. We need to choose one, which fits the data characteristics and the purpose than over the analyze most. On last page, I said that the data characteristics is very important, even decide the method we used. So here I must talk about the game we analyze, which is the free-to-play mobile games. Recent years, the market of free-to-play games grows very fast, especially for the mobile casual free games. For the free-to-play games, for a certain game product, the amount of user can be very large, but meanwhile, the overall retention is relatively low, which makes the user data behavior sequence data is, is highly spicy. To deal with the situations described above, here is our solution. Just as mentioned above, the key problem of time series clustering is to decide the distance definition. We need, to, we need to consider that how do we want to divide user behavior and what are the characteristics of user behavior time series data. The distance definition is quite important because we can see that the choice of distance definitions essentially decide the classification of user behavior and also affect the crafting algorithms that can be used. Here are the typical time series distance definitions used on the previous works, such as Euclidean distance, the distance calculated by the dynamic uh, time wrapping, and so on. The overall information is on this page, and I just skip the details equations of those distance definitions before they are wildly used. But for our game data analysis, different 
from most private works, there are some requirements of the distance definitions. First of all, we want both the shape and the magnitude of the user behavior sequence contribute to the distance. And it is best that we can control how they contribute, the amount of their contribute. Then we need the strong tolerance for the sparsity of time series. That is very important. In this page, in this page we can see the, sam the sample 3 and the sample 4 means a player who plays game every Saturday and a player who plays game every Sunday. They can say, we can see that they, their time-dependent behaviors are very similar, which is tend to play on weekends. Then, for the same reason, we want the distance definitions, torrents, slight time shift on the similar shape time series. And of course, it is best that we can control the strength of this torrents. Here is the distance definitions we proposed. We call it smooth sequence Euclidean distance, for it is calculated like the Euclidean distance, but we introduce the smooth transformation and transform and transformed the two raw time series first. The idea is not compli complexity, but when put in practical, turns out to be very useful to solve the problems above. And another advantage of the smooth sequence Euclidean distance is that the smooth coefficient can be designed according to the product and the user behavior characteristics. This page shows the distance over the six sample time series. In general, the distance definitions we want should be able to make the distance between user 1 and user 2 large enough while keeping the distance between user 3 and user 4 close enough. Here we can see the FEOD is best suited for this purpose. Then in this part, let me talk about the data sets we used in this work. The game product we analyzed is Uno. Uno is a mobile game modified from a very classical and famous card game in the West. It was developed by the Mattel 163 and NetEase present its service and operation in China. This game has more than 100 million players over the world. In this game, we select the players. Uh, in this work, in this work, we select the players who those who create account within a same a same pyramid of time within a small pyramid of time, and use their behavior data of 21 days. Because those players in those days, they all play the same version of the game. Among the above user data, we select the users, those who, after one week since the account creation, active at least once. After those selections, we randomly select 100,000 players from the remaining user. For the gameplay of Game Uno, we use the number of rounds to measure the time investment of a player. The, um, this means how many Uno card game each player plays every day, and use the number of coins. Here, coins mean the in-game currency players can win or lose after a round of card game. The number of coins can measure the play dips of each player every day. With the definition of distance and the user time series data, we can use the casting algorithm to get the results. Here we use the k-means, traditionally, but effective. From the casting results, UNO users can be divided into six classes in terms of numbers of game runs. Among them, we can see class 1 and class 2 both lose interests very fast in similar ways. Class 3 and class 5 both have a sudden increase in the first few days after entering the game, and then begin to decrease quickly. 
and both class 4 and class 6 users are interested in the game and tend to stay more times. Uh, here is the crafting of number of coins. Among them, you can see class 1 shows that their investment in the coins drops extremely fast, and then there's a small rebound in about a week. The behavior pattern of class three, uh, of class two, three, and four, are relatively similar, and they all begin with a short pyramid of gentle and slow decaying, but decrease extremely fast afterward. The difference of those three classes is that the length of the slow decaying state stage is different. The longer the stage is, the fewer the number of players. Most players in those classes lost interesting quickly, and the longer the interesting lasts, the fewer the players lives. Of course, this has also a general pattern of almost all games. Class 5 means that the players who have been declaring slowly uh, throughout about all 21 days. It is, can be said they are the most stable and core users in the game. The performance of class 6 of about 6% uh, of users is rather uh, special. After about one week, the data rise and keep on high level after a small drop. As to the payment, which of course is the most important part, we can see crafting Crafting by number of rounds shows that those who play longer pay more, and also the payment rate decreases significant after the first 21 days, but those who keep playing tend to pay more. While well, the crafting by number of coins shows a different kind of classification, the class 6 pays even less than class 4, which means maybe when players who win too much coins in the game will attend do not pay more. And in this figure, we can see that the crafting results that obtained by the time series are different from those obtained by the sum of the data. Uh, finally, here is the conclusion of my work. Mm, thank you for your hearing, and I hope this may help you. Uh, thank you again and thanks to the conference committee.